Hey guys! So we are finally getting around to um, answering those questions that I posted about on Facebook and Instagram on the like probably more than a month ago. It's been a long time, um, but it's been difficult to get our schedules to work out. Um, so yeah, we're finally getting around to it. Our schedule's working out right now. We got some time together. <sighs> This is my wonderful, wondrous husband. This is Aaron. That's you me. guys are uh, getting to hear and see him a little bit. I'm he's... her other training project. <laughs> yeah, he's got a ways to go still. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, um, he's my IT guy too, my behind the scenes IT guy. He's been doing, um, helping with the website and he's working on a program for me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's in so, progress. It's been in progress for a little <laughs> bit, but that's okay. <laughs> this is part of his training, you know, that we were talking about. So so I guess we'll get right on to the questions. Um, we were going to do a little bit of a um, talking point topic, um, but with everything being so heavy right now, I didn't want to talk about anything heavy. And that's kind of what the, the topping point was, was just something heavy. So instead of talking about that, we're going to keep things kind of light tonight and just answer questions and... Go from there. Whatever cool. happens, happens. Are you ready to start? So the first one. So the first question is from Michelle. Mm -hmm. And I probably should have read these beforehand. How can I stop my dogs from going ballistic? Is that a technical dog training term? <laughs> from going ballistic whenever I try to give them a treat. It's getting worse. Yesterday I was bit. Not okay. Good. Nope, not good. So getting a treat. And she did post a picture of that bike. And ouch, it look painful um so this was from michelle yep oh goodness so going ballistic when you get a treat so at this point it seems like your dogs are really excited to get the treat and you're giving them giving them the treats at a time of um high excitement at a time when when they are really escalated as far as the excitement goes so i would not be treating them during those times um, pick a time that, you know, when they're resting. So a thing to remember, treats are a reward. So if you want to re give them a treat, use it as a reward to reward, reward a state of mind that you want. Go ahead and give them a treat, but wait until they're being calm. Wait until they're just laying quietly. Wait till they're doing what you want them to do. Um, if you're giving them a treat to reward them for, say, obeying a command, Maybe the treats, the, the food is the wrong thing to be rewarding with. Maybe you should be rewarding with a pet or something like that instead. So the rule of thumb with rewarding is if it, ask yourself, does it help or does it hurt? If it hurts, and in this case, it's hurting more than just the training, it's hurting your, <laughs> your finger. <laughs> so if it hurts, don't use that reward. You need to find a different reward. Um, another thing you can do, if it's, if it's not in excitement issue if they're not biting you because they're excited but they just have a rough mouth um one of the things that i do and the dog i just finished training up dexter he was really rough when he took food he didn't just lick it out of your hand he used his teeth to take it so one of the things i did was i would hold my hand shut and if he would if he wanted to come at me with his teeth i would tell him no um and wait for him to be to he, for him to gentle himself um, typically what he would do is he would start to lick my hand. And at that point I knew that he had calmed down enough. And then I wouldn't just open my hand so that he'd grab fingers. I would just put a little spot for him to lick the food out, out of my hand like that. So there's some, uh, some ideas on that. So number cool. two. Good answer. <laughs> okay. So am I doing this right? So far, I guess. Where's my treat? <laughs> <laughs> all right number two is from taylor my dog will go into the crate upon command when wearing her prong collar or when a treat is involved but strong arms me and resists without the use of these two items what do i do so this question is from taylor, taylor yes um so taylor has already sent his dog blanche to me for training she came for just a one week train um board and train i should say so in one week you know, there's not a, a whole lot that I can teach a dog other than just basic commands, the foundation, 
Um, they're learning and obeying because they have the prong collar Go ahead. and the leash to um, to correct them. Um, sorry, that was one of our dogs. Your dogs want to be on the video too. <laughs> um, so she's miss, missing Aaron. <laughs> um, anyway, so he's ready now to take her off of the leash. Um, she's been dragging it around at home, wearing it on the prong collar so that he has a way of following up and making sure that she actually does what, what she's asked to do. So as he said, she, now she knows when the prong collar is on and she won't even go in the crate without the prong collar unless he gives her a treat. So we're at this midway point. So dragging around the leash can be really annoying. Um, having to worry about that all day long can be really annoying. So what I'm going to recommend is in the interim between going from dragging the leash around to off leash, we have this wonderful, this is a leash, believe it or not. It is called a traffic leash. There's another name for it. I can't remember. But all it is really is just a handle. That's it. It's the handle of the leash. And the dog can wear this. And it's it's almost like it's not wearing a leash at all. But it gives the owner leverage. So that when the dog thinks that it can get away with something, the owner just needs to grab this. Well, you know, the dog's wearing it already. So he just needs to grab this and guide him into or her into the crate that's the follow-up or the correction comes from that also so the dog thinks that even though I don't have a leash on I can still get corrected and that just holds them more accountable for their next actions um, and then when it's time for the, to take this off you'll know because your dog will be being very consistent with just doing what it's asked to do unfortunately the prong collar will probably need to be worn until you either get e-collar training, which at that point will also need to, the e-collar will need to be worn for a while, or until every single day while you're home, when you're asking it to do things, it needs to have that phone collar on um, so that it gets into the habit of obeying. Right now also, um, your dog is probably approaching the, the rebellious teenager age um, where it learns that I can get away with not having to listen, so I'm going to test the waters every chance I get. So right now it's a good idea just to have that, that collar on all the time anyway. Cool. All right, so number three. Number three is from Kat. How do you stop food aggression? Okay. <laughs> so food aggression. See, this can be... I don't know if we have food aggression against just other dogs. Is it food aggression against humans you know, too? You know, it, what is food aggression at this point? So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, the first thing I would do is teach your dog how to wait for food. Um, I have videos on my on my website. OkLadyCanineTraining.com <laughs> Under the How-To Videos page. Um, and that will show you how, also you can just check out the videos that I, that I post too on Facebook because a lot of times, uh, I will share that, have the dogs waiting for food. Um, so you can use, there's videos definitely everywhere, YouTube also, on how to have your dog wait for food. That's a really good idea, really good habit to get into for yourself and for your dog. The second thing I would do is work on the out command. Um, the out command, again, I have videos on how to teach the out command um, and that's going to keep you safe in the long run so if you can tell your dog out and it knows to move away from the food when you tell it out then you are safe bending over to pick the food up um, so the out command is is all about it's not just dropping what it has in its mouth it's not just moving away from it but what you want it to do is not just physically move away from the food you want it to mentally move away from the food so it's almost as if the dog forgets that, that food is even there when it walks away walks away it's it's like okay I can't have the food anymore I'm done with it so that's what you're looking for so that the out command is great for that number three so if your dog is crate trained which I highly recommend I would also recommend just feeding your dog in the crate don't offer it food unless it's in the crate. Don't leave its food out, no free feeding. I would feed it probably twice a day in the crate. That just gets rid of a lot of problems too. So you have a few options there. 
Cool. Okay. And number four, this is our last question. Number four. From this Instagram question. From she won Y M E L Y. I won't even try I don't know. That. I wonder if that's not Shelly Millie. Yep, could be. Could be. All right. The question is. How do I get an indoor dog used to an outdoor dog? We took in a couple of stray puppies, but our inside dog, Sage, who's a Yorkie, hates them. She has stared, stared not, she has started, I probably, she has started not going outside to pee and poop and growls at the puppies. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Um... Because you have one indoor dog and the others are outdoor, it kind of gives you a little bit of a problem there. Um, this gives you less time to work with the dogs that are outside. Um, but they're puppies, so it is a good time to start molding habits that you want. In this case, what is it that the Yorkie doesn't like about the puppies? Are they too pushy? Do they, do they want to engage in play and she doesn't want to? Or is it the fact that they're just out there and she doesn't like them? Really, it's hard to troubleshoot this without more information. Um, so if the puppies are wanting to play with her and she doesn't want to be played with, um, you know, really your big thing is going to be to advocate for her. So if they're doing things that she doesn't like, then you're going to need to tell them no and make sure that they leave her alone so that she will go to the bathroom. Unfortunately, you're also going to need to be present to make sure none of this happens and until they build the good habits. If it's a matter of her just not liking them because it's her property, that's going to take some, that's gonna take some extra instruction. Um, please feel free to go ahead and just private message me with or call me or text me whatever you want to do email me um, with some more information on that I'd like to help help troubleshoot this problem with you um, really I just feel like I don't have enough information to, to be able to correctly give you and give you instruction that's going to be helpful should she try to introduce the puppies to the inside dog well that's that's where the the trouble is because I don't know if the puppies are mm. if it's the puppies problem or if it's gotcha the Yorkie problem um, and I would imagine that the Yorkie's probably quite a bit smaller than the puppies too and that that may be part of it um, so there's yeah there's a there's a whole big process to introducing dogs that can be dangerous um, and I would hate for anybody to get hurt or to start any kind of so the puppies are really <sighs> They're probably, depending on the age of the puppies, <laughs> um, they could be at that age where they're really impressionable, where um, any terrible thing that happens leaves a permanent scar on them, you know, uh, in mentally. So that in their, when as they're adults, they remember that that one incident and it becomes all dogs are bad and then they have aggressive problems with all dogs so yeah definitely just give me a holler i'd like to help but i just need more information cool yeah that's all we got so that's it so we are going to try to do this regularly we just have to get our schedules together um after this after we hit the stop button on this we're probably going to sit down and look at our calendars and try to decide when we can do it again i'm hoping to do it once a month for now um, and then as interest increases maybe we can do it more often and then maybe eventually we can actually get to where we're doing like a live question and answer where you guys can watch and type your questions and we can answer them on the fly as we go so cool. let us know what you think yeah for sure in the comments <laughs> yeah. send us an email let us know well, comments. comments. Comments are better. Yeah. Comments is good. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see you in about a month and I will post up another, you know, thing where you guys can post your questions. You can also post questions in the comments below here too. So we'll answer them next time. Sounds good. So talk to you guys later. Bye.